Getting your colored pencil drawings to look extremely realistic can at times be a challenge. There's a number of factors to colored pencil drawing that influences the realism of your work. And there are loads of different techniques to achieve that. I'm going to go over the most powerful, top, best tips to help your drawings look epically real. Along my journey in learning to draw really realistic drawings, there has been a few things that have really helped me get there. And going to art school isn't one of them because I'm self-taught and you don't need to go to school to become a great artist. Probably the biggest number one thing that has helped me on my journey in learning to draw really realistic drawings is as simple as using references. Now, there are a lot of good reference photos out there to use for drawing. However, there are specific ones that you want to use to give yourself a better opportunity to learn to draw super realistic drawings. And those are ones that are a little bit more on the dramatic side, meaning that they have really high highlights and really dark shadows. This gives you an opportunity to learn all of the balancing that you need to do with your work in order to achieve those really high highlights and really dark shadows that make the drawing come to life. There are of course some pretty good ones that are more of an overcast lighting that don't have any harsh highlights or dark shadows, but those just aren't going to give you the full experience. Those are awesome to do, it's just that in your learning journey, it's important to have those more dramatic photos to use as a reference. Besides picking out some of those more dramatic references to use for drawing, what is it exactly that references are going to help you learn? Reference photos allow you to see all of those nitty gritty details. In one photo, you have a real picture. Therefore, it's a lot easier for you to try and judge on what you're trying to draw and compare to what a real photo looks like and what you should be trying to get with your drawing. Learning to draw this way and using references instead of trying to imagine everything in your head is going to speed up your abilities to draw really realistic photos a lot faster. You're going to have a much easier time trying to get the same likeness with the eye details, the noses, the mouth, all the colors, and especially those details that are of course going to really help your drawings pop. The biggest thing that I spent my time perfecting over the years that has influenced my artwork the most in it looking real is values. Values are of course the single most important thing in a drawing looking realistic. That is how highlighted the highlights are and how shaded those shadows are. And of course, all the equally important midtones in between. Learning to get proper values with your drawings actually takes quite a long time. I feel like this is the number one area that a lot of other artists struggle with. And I actually see a lot of other professional artists out there who have really great drawings with really high details, but their values still lack. And so their drawings don't look as real as a photo. Now, of course, there are different different styles to drawing, so I'm not knacking on any different styles out there because I do know that some artists go for a specific style. But if you're trying to achieve photorealism, then that's not the way to go. How do you get better values with your drawings? You need to constantly compare and check the values that you have on your drawing to the reference photo that you're using. As you're working on an area, as you complete an area, as you complete another area, every time you need to be checking and comparing. During the first stages of a drawing, usually you don't have all of the correct values right. You may be pretty close, but it's not always going to be 100% correct. At the point of when you get an entire drawing filled in and then you check your values again, that's when you're going to really refine and be able to pinpoint all of those different ranges of values that you have inaccurate and be able to get them accurate by making the necessary adjustments, which usually is making the shadows and some of the midtones a little darker. Because you have most of your drawing filled in, you have all of the majority of the highlights, midtones, and shadows already in, so then when you're trying to judge what's inaccurate, it's actually a lot easier to see those differences. There are also a couple of other ways that you can help yourself out in trying to make sure that you get the right values. And that is, of course, by spending a little time before you begin your drawing to try and assess the colors that you see in the reference photo and picking the right colors that you need for the drawing. And then you're going to wanna to try mixing up some color combinations to get the right colors and values you have with your reference photo on a piece of scratch paper so that you can get a feel for exactly what you need to do with your drawing, your color mixing, as well as your techniques to get the right look. Another thing I also find that helps is having your pencils organized in a way that they're all laid out so that you can see them and they are ordered by their color hues. 
meaning that the reds that are just straight red will be in one spot. And then as the color of red starts to drift into yellow, you're slowly increasing by the next pencil, one that has a little bit more yellow into it until you get into yellow. And then of course you have your yellow pencils and you would want to do that so on and so forth with all of the other colors to your set. This makes it much easier to try and pinpoint exactly what you need and just grab and go because oftentimes you can pick out a lot of the colors that you think you're going to need and then you actually sit down to draw and you don't use all of the colors that you originally picked and you sometimes need to grab other colors that you didn't think you needed before. When I was drawing as a kid, I used to draw with colored pencils quite often and I really hated the fact that they were pretty grainy and you couldn't get a very realistic look to them. Since being a kid and trying to draw with colored pencils, I have learned that you can use solvent as a method to blending them to get everything to smooth out really nicely. This of course saves some aches and pains with your hands and trying to burnish blend them into being smooth. And instead with using solvent, it is much easier to get a nice soft blend that doesn't make your hand hurt as much. Now the way that solvent helps in your drawings looking super realistic is that in my opinion, solvent is the best way to blend colored pencils. Now, why is that? Because not only does it allow you to get a really nice, soft, smooth blend for even minimal layers, you can get those nice soft blends and good color blending ability with having heavier layers as well. This makes getting blurry backgrounds a lot easier as well as having really nice soft undertones for some of those more softer looking animals. And because the solvent actually breaks down the binders of the pencils and semi-permanently puts those pigments straight into the paper, it kind of eliminates that buildup and top layer of colored pencils so you can get a little bit more layers. And most especially, you can get more of those dark layers, increasing your value capacity to getting really, really great dark shadows. Then there's also the fact that Using solvent allows you to use pretty much any paper that you want with virtually no issues because you can blend the layers that you have down into all the crevices of the paper that you're using. So that way you don't have any whites showing through. Another contributing factor to having epic realistic drawings is the amount of details that you put in and most especially when drawing animals, the fur techniques that you're using. You don't have to spend a lot of time trying to draw every single detail in your drawing that you see in a reference photo, but at least having about about 50% of your drawing being super realistic, of course helps. And you mainly wanna focus putting those high details into the focal point of your drawing, which of course, if it's an animal, that's going to be the eyes and the face. And then tapering off on the details as you progress into other areas of the animal. But to make sure that you keep the realism with the work, you have to have the right values. So even if you put less detail into some of the other areas of your drawing, you have to have those accurate values, especially those shadows for the drawing to look realistic. Learning to draw details can of course take time in learning all of the different techniques that go into it. But the biggest contributing factor to having really good looking details that help with that realism of your work is learning to draw shapes. All of the different areas of your drawing, you need to think about it in terms of what specific shapes you're seeing, how light or dark those shapes are, and don't even think about the object that you're drawing. So if you're drawing a dog, don't even think about it being a dog. You need to think about, I see this shadow shape here that's kind of shaped like this. I see these highlights that come down this far and they're this close to that shadow shape. And these highlights, they look like this. And that is what you need to be focusing on with each little area that you're working on with your drawing. Because learning to grasp this technique in seeing shapes and copying those shapes and patterns with your drawing is what gets you that epic realism. You don't have to draw exactly to your reference photo. The key in mind is to get yourself to memorize those repetitive types of patterns that you're seeing with those specific areas and mimicking those with your drawing. So the spacing between the fur patterns, those shadows and midtones, and the lengths and just copying those basics of the details that you see onto your drawing. One way you can help yourself in trying to get those shapes with your drawings 
is focusing on trying to get in the shadow shapes first to help build structure with your fur and that'll help you build all of the rest of the mid-tones and highlights from there. Now I don't mean going all out and trying to get all of the shadows in right then and there. You just want about one light layer worth of kind of a general buildup of what those shadows are and where they're at. And diving further into drawing patterns and details, you can learn all about those techniques in this video here. And if you're looking to level up your drawing skills even further, then check out my real-time tutorials on Patreon. There's a link right here on the screen. You will learn all kinds of drawing tips and techniques with colored pencil, graphite, and soft pastel. Thanks so much for watching this video. I will see you in the next one.